you guys can feel free to unmute yourselves. And I'd love to see all of your faces if possible too. Hi, Ayana. Oh my God, it's so good to see you. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks for asking. Oh my gosh, we have a brand new volunteer as well, Gil, who is connecting right now. Okay, awesome, Catriel. Santana, thanks for inviting Catriel too. I'm glad she's gonna be on here. Hi, Cece. <laughs> new volunteer. Zara, I wanna watch your video. I haven't had the chance to. <laughs> I just edited it so hopefully hopefully the like quality of it is okay <laughs> yeah it, i mean the first one was really really well done so you got the right idea i loved it um okay awesome hi gail <laughs> katriel feel free to unmute yourself or lo let your video show too i'd love to introduce you to our new volunteers yeah sorry i don't know what's happening with my video but i was just about to type that in the chat um okay. i'm catriel hello <laughs> catriel is so awesome you guys she's one of our interns and she is on the spectrum and she is doing this awesome video series for our ready set go program um, which helps teens transition from high school into college um, and getting ready for, you know, independent living independently. Um, it's so crazy to see all of you guys on here are high school students. How cool is that? <laughs> I love this high school students like rock <laughs> just in San Diego. You guys make our foundation keep going. It's so kudos to you guys for being super involved. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get started and just add people in as we go so you can kind of stay on time. I really love, would love your feedback at any time. Feel free to unmute yourself. Um, this is not a one-way street. I, I don't wanna just be like lecturing everybody. So I like to hear your questions, your voices, um, your engagement. You can also type it in the chat and I will you know, help with that. Santana, if you could help with that too, um, because whenever I sh share my screen, I usually can't see the chat. So feel free to like shout out whatever. Okay, I'm gonna get started. So welcome everyone to our core team meeting. Um, we do hold these monthly, but we actually didn't have one last month. Um, so we're catching up a little bit. Um, so welcome to every to everybody to this. Um, a few Zoom rules for everyone. Please mute yourself when you're not speaking. I'm just gonna like throw that out because I want you guys to engage with me. Um, we do recommend speaker view, but you can feel free to have it on gallery or whatever you're comfortable with. Video sharing is optional, though I love to see all your faces. Please type all questions, comments in the chat. I already covered that, great. A couple updates um, from Autism Tree. Since March, 2020 last year, when COVID first hit, we had to pivot immensely. And we were are so grateful to be able to track all of our social media stats and our impact on our community. We pivoted really quickly and had 19 of our virtual programs um, or all of our programs virtually. Um, so we're still doing that in all of our virtual programs. Our social media stats, we have now reached 596,000 people since last March. Um, this is through all of our social media platforms. So we do it all, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, um, Twitter, YouTube. And then I have new interns possibly working on doing a um, TikTok for us. Um, all of you young high school students <laughs> should follow us. Um, and we're also working on doing possibly a Twitch as well. Um, so that's all in the works. And all thanks to my amazing young interns um, who are helping me, you know, manage all of these problems because I couldn't do them on my own. Um, and they're also way better at it than I am creating content. So if you guys are interested and in, we do need help with um, our LinkedIn, so a more professional um, intern would be really good for that. We also need help with our um, Instagram 
I do have one intern, amazing intern, Jonica, and she manages it. So if you follow us on Instagram, that's all Jonica. I got to give her a shout out. Um, she's incredible. So if you would like to get involved with social media, let me know. Um, posts, our posts have been shared over a thousand times. So thank you for sharing our posts um, and our videos. We have, we post almost every day. I'm pretty sure every day. Um, and we have videos that we post and, and photos. Uh, we have now 398 videos, almost 400 videos on our YouTube channel and 346 of those. So a huge majority have come, have been posted since March 12th last year. So that's all from our volunteers like you who are creating amazing content for our kids and families um, that have kept them engaged and kept them inspired and kept them just connecting throughout this whole time because it's been hard for everyone. And what I just love about Autism Free Socials is that it's all positive. It's all love. And you can see that from the video content that our, our interns and our volunteers create for our kids and families. Um, we also have a Reading with Autism Tree series, which I'll go over a little bit. Um, our kids, our volunteers read um, children's books for our kids. Um, luckily, publishers are still allowing that to be recorded and posted. Um, so we've, we've posted over 107 videos in just that series. Um, we have a whole playlist dedicated to it on our YouTube channel. And then, of course, we've also provided 265 virtual events to date. Um, and we have 22 virtual events and a few in person coming up, um, which I'll go over um, within the next couple months. Um, so stay tuned. Now I want to do, usually we have start this off with an inspiration um, by one of our core team members. Um, but today I wanted, since we have so many new faces, I want us to get to know each other. Um, and it's a smaller group, which I love. Um, so we can kind of take a little bit of time to get to know one another and um, feel more a part of this is the team that, that we have every week um, and every month that helps us do all of our events. So please, when I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we'll go in gallery view and see everybody's faces, please say your name, um, your school, if you go to school or your job if you are working. Um, also new volunteers, just tell us a little bit about yourself, why you're here on a Thursday night. Why do you wanna volunteer with Autism Tree? Um, and then returning volunteers, I thought this would be a good idea. If you could give a piece of advice to our new volunteers, what would it be? After all your experiences with Autism Tree, what would you like to pass on? And then a fun question, what's talent or skill would you like the most to learn, um, grow and develop? So I, that could be anything. I'd like to, I actually want to sail a boat. That is my talent that I would, or skill that I would like to develop, um, which would be super fun. So anyways, okay. Who will be first? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass it over to, over to Santana, just cause I can. <laughs> Santana is my our program assistant and she can kick us off and go ahead Santana. So hi everyone I'm Santana. I'm going to be starting my master's in August at San Diego State. Um, I'm working on an education master's and with a concentration in counseling as well as a certificate in mental health um, and I love ATPF and one thing that I could share with you is that um, going to each day of your internship just with love and happiness and at the end of your day you'll have a great day um, and yeah so just always keep a positive mindset and it will just be a great internship. Thank you Santana. Santana started off as an intern through SDSU with us and then she came on as a program assistant. And then she left to study abroad for a little while. And then she came back. <laughs> and she now runs our Lego program as well. She's our program director for that. So any of you who are looking for you know, more um, leadership opportunities, if you want to lead an event for our families, I am open to that. Um, you could help. And Santana and I can kind of help get that going. 
Okay, I'm gonna pass it off to one of our other returning lovely members, Ms. Brina Heyman. Hello, Brina. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Why don't you introduce yourself and a little bit about yourself and to your group. Okay. Well, my name is Brina Heyman. I'm a speech language pathologist and I've been involved with ATPF for, what are we, are we going on 17 or 18 years? 18 years. 18 years before it was even a thought. And I am hoping to pass this on to my daughter, Allison Schwartz, who just logged in and hoping that she is going to be more involved with ATPF. Um, she's involved with NCL. I don't know if any of you have been involved with that before, but I basically have been involved with training all the volunteers and any of the interns or the, I mean, anybody that asked to be trained, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so what my role is, is that um, I am involved with NCL, National Charity League, and I run the National Charity League groups. And so we're hoping to bridge National Charity League more with Autism Tree in not just the programs that NCL runs, but also within the other programs. Like if you need help at the Lego group, or um, we talked about doing some, uh, the dance group so that we can get the girls who are age 13 to 17 or so, get them more involved in the other aspects of ATPF besides just running mentor programs and things like that. So kind of my role, I'm a, I think, did I say I was a speech pathologist? <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. Is, Brina is awesome. She actually, um, Dana, this foundation was started by Dana and Todd Hoff, two parents, and they took, the more than words class that Brina did, right, Brina? I taught them, yeah, like yeah. I mean, taught it. <laughs> Literally taught them and it like saved everything for them and put them on the right track for Garrett, their son, who was diagnosed in 2003 um, to be um, become as successful as he is. And now he's a graduate at um, from George Washington University, he just graduated. Um, which is incredible and he's doing he passed the LSAT and he's doing incredible things over on the East Coast so um, Brina you can contribute that you know to and then she's built you know been here since the beginning and helped see how Autism Tree has grown and all of our volunteers um, we're so grateful for you Brina. <laughs> and I think I, the biggest part is is the switch over that we're making to having our young volunteers and um, our, our, the, our young adults to be more involved in the presentation of the groups. And before it was always like older people like me and parents and um, a more, a little older adults. And we really want to get that young crowd and get um, things that the kids really need to know. And, you know, we're, you know, we, we miss things after a while. Although Rebecca, you're not really in our crowd. What are you, 23? <laughs> 25. 25. <laughs> With it, so it's, it's really great to see all your faces and, and all uh, having so many volunteers and internships and things like that because it adds so much to the foundation. And it really helps bring it to a different level, more into the future. Yes. Welcome. Absolutely. I saw Allison was in here and then I think she had technical. She yeah, apparently she's getting Chick-fil-A right now. Oh, <laughs> well, well, we'll be here until five so she can join yeah. us. Well, she better. I just bought her this cool leather jacket from Aritzi. <laughs> she needs to volunteer to pay it off. <laughs> it's a good incentive. Yeah. Awesome. And we're recording this too, so we can always, you know, hello to everyone who's viewing this from home. Um, we will go over all of it as well. Okay. I'll hop back on track. Oh, Brina, do you have any advice you want to give to the young people on here? Uh, sure. I would say get involved with things. Don't pretend like you need to know everything and that you should that you should know everything. You know, don't be afraid to ask. And that a lot of the times don't be afraid to contribute new ideas. Because just because we did it this way last time doesn't mean we need to do it this way the next time. And that's the whole point of constantly getting, you know, a new crop of volunteers, more um, 
more people is to get different opinions. And our, I, I'm, I'm, uh, Dana always uses the word organic. And, and I really like that because it is organic. It's growing. It's always changing. And so we want to hear your advice and ideas and things like that. You know, we might ignore them, but we're always happy to, to hear them. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, now is uh, this time is just going through COVID. We've shown how much we ha have pivoted, and a lot of that has been due to uh, my interns who have helped me. Um, because that's I had 20 different interns that I managed last year, um, just because nobody was taking interns for a period of time, and I took all of them, and they were so critical in pivoting our foundation to go online and reach our community and have that giant social media reach that of all those numbers that I have said before. So that's all because of you amazing young people who are stepping up. And I love to see that you're so passionate and they care. Um, but I feel like Autism Tree gravitates those types of people. And I'm very you know, grateful to have people like that as part of our community and to keep it growing, going on to the next phase. All right, John. <laughs> Hi, John. Uh, alluding to Brina's comment about us old people, I will uh, represent the old people. Because <laughs> Brina, you're not even well. You're you're, you're still you still look 29. Um, I'm John Hickey. I've been around Autism Tree for only 16 of the 17 years. I missed the first year. Uh, um, darn. Um, but. Uh, I think I've made up for it in the last 16 or 17 years. Um, let's see, title, what do I do? Um, officially, I'm the director of the USD football, baseball, and mentor programs um, that we've done football for 12 years, baseball for nine, would have been nine this year, but a little pandemic thing. Um, and this this year, because of the pandemic, um, Beck and I got to spend a lot of quality time together moving um, from the ATPF office to the new office or the vault, as we call it. Um, and just, you know, kind of got to help be kind of streamline things a little bit. And I mean, having interns around, you know, just to help do stuff. I mean, helping to clean up the old office was four or five people in there helping to clean up. Um, I brought in my son's rugby team for the heavy move. That was a pretty fun day. And all those guys loved it and, you know, are offering to come and help again as well. And um, I also produce all the big galas and everything for Autism Tree. So the um, from the five-year gala we did at the Manchester Hyatt, the 10-year at the Hard Rock, and the last three we've done at Del Mar Fairgrounds. And I've had something to do with all of the neuroscience conferences and am helping with that again this year. And um, that's kind of what I do for my real job when I'm actually working after furlough, after a after we get to start doing meetings and concerts again, I produce meetings and concerts. Um, so I've, I've had a lot of free time on my hands this last year. And um, something that I would like to master or learn or get whatever, um, play guitar or piano. Nice. Because I like to sing and I'd like to be able to play along with myself or just be able to play. Yeah, me too. I would love to do piano. I used to do well, let's go sailing and play guitar. <laughs> let's do it. Um, do you have any advice, John, for our, our young people? <laughs> um, last year, about this time last, or no, two years ago, I think, um, I did a presented at a core team meeting at the office when we all used to actually meet in the office and and have dinner and and cake and stuff god i miss those days um and my presentation um was based on one of my favorite doctors um medical advice and that would be dr seuss 
And my, my advice is um, you never know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. So you never know when it's gonna happen. You can't really script everything to happen, but if you're there and you're present and you're just kind of helping kids have fun and helping families do something out of their ordinary, through our football baseball mentor programs, we have had so many amazing, I call them made for TV moments that you can't script stuff like that. It's just players' lives are changed, families' lives or kids' lives are changed. And it's you never really know what's gonna happen until it happens. So just kind of keep an open heart, keep it open, open eyes, and just be be ready for something fun to happen. And um and be part of the fun while it's happening. And it's something you will probably never forget. Thank you, John. Yeah, we were in our office for about a decade. I can't believe that John was totally, absolutely amazing and necessary for us to move. So we were in it from 2011 to last to this year. Um, so we were there in a decade and, and now we're completely remote. So I'm working completely from home. So is Santana. And, and now we're, when we go back to in-person events, we're looking to do them out in the community, which is what we've already been doing for majority of our events anyways. Um, but if anybody has any ideas on like places in San Diego where we can have events, um, I'm open to that. And also just just let me know how you want to get involved um, in person. We're always looking for new ideas. Um, we will hopefully, definitely, we will definitely meet again. I have a core team meeting. Before they had the office, they would have these at, you know, restaurant patios. You know, we will find a place, a meeting place. Even if we have to hold it in the park, we'll make it work. So we'll, we'll see each other again in person very soon. I'm hoping by the end of this year. <laughs> All right. Um, let's go to Mia Fogg, since you joined, was so lucky and awesome to join. Thank, I'm grateful for you to join me um, this before this meeting. Um, we had an awesome talk. Mia, why don't you tell the group a little bit about you? Um, hi, my name is Mia Boggs. Um, I'm an incoming senior at Cathedral Catholic High School. And what got me kind of involved with this type of work is I'm a mentor at my school. So I mentor someone with disabilities and it was such an amazing experience and I'm so blessed to be here. Thanks, Mia. What's a talent or skill that you want to develop? I love to surf, but I would love to continue to do that for sure. <laughs> Mia started, everyone Mia told me that she started a surf camp for the kids at her school, um, which is called an options program. So there's about 10 kids with um, special needs that she took on a surfing trip on an afternoon, um, which is so awesome, Dina. That's the, that's the kind of fun things that we like to do here too. <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna pass it off to Zara. Hi, Zara. Hi, I'm Zara Schmidt. I go to uh, OLP or Our Lady of Peace School in North Park. And one skill or talent I would like to develop is I'd like to be able to be fluent in Spanish. Fluent in Spanish? Oh my gosh. Is anybody fluent in Spanish here? No? <laughs> we would love more Spanish speakers in our community too. <laughs> We have a lot of Spanish speaking families and luckily we have amazing Spanish speaking parent mentors that have been awesome in keeping you know, them close. And that's so yeah, learning Spanish, it's a good skill to have, life skill. Catriel, why don't you go next? Hello, I'm Catriel. I forgot a lot of the questions, but one skill I wanna, oh, I go to Westmont College and um, one skill I would like to develop was, actually there's a few. One is singing, cause like I used to take voice lessons and then I stopped for a long time. And another one is social skills, cause I'm thinking of working with adults with autism. And in order to do that, I need to be able to uh, pick up on social skills more so than I currently am. 
I'm not doing awful at that, but like, that's also not my strong suit. So yeah. And so that'd be really helpful if I could pick up on social skills and keep learning those. Yeah, there's always room for growth in that. I feel like for everybody too, um, we can always find better ways to connect with each other and um, learning social cues. I love the singing part too. Um, Catriol, that's awesome. We have um, Catriol and is doing the video series that you know we that I mentioned before, and we're gonna pair you with another intern named Mia, um, who's also Academy of Our Lady Peace. I think friends with Zara, right, Zara? Yeah, no, I'm super close with Mia. It's like we kind of like talked about joining it together. So, oh, see, I love that so much. Um, so Mia is going to be working with Katriel on the editing the videos for her series, which you guys will see on our social media this week and, and for the next six weeks. Um, and I know Mia has her own YouTube channel and she sings. So maybe she can give you some singing tips. <laughs> we'll talk Mia's about like it. Mia's super talented. At it. She's like, she plays the piano and like the guitar and other stuff too. So awesome. All right. Ayana, you can go next. Hi, I'm Ayana. Um, I'm going to be a senior at Kenyon Crest Academy. And one special skill that I would like to learn would probably be to learn guitar. So, yeah. And also, I love volunteering here because there's like, we offer so many different events. And like, I love how we have um, like coding classes and like art classes and dance classes. And I find that, I find that super cool. Thank you for that. Ayana also helps with our Twitter every once in a while too, which is Awesome. Um, okay, Cece, you can go next. Um, hi, I'm Cece. I'm a rising junior um, at La Jolla Country Day School. And I'm really excited because like I'm kind of new to ATPF, but I'm really excited to be like doing more events. Um, and I also really like how there's like many different like things like dance or like music or just all of them just sound really fun. And um, one special skill I want to work on is just like getting better at dancing and singing. Awesome. I love the artistic, you know, drive that everybody has. <laughs> it's great. And last but not least, Gil, I'm so excited you could join us today. He, Gil just texted me and he's a friend of Cece's, but I'll let you introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so hi, I'm Gil. Um... Yeah, I go to. I just graduated from Stage Creek High School, so it's pretty far. It's like thirty minutes away from San Diego or something. And um, yeah, I'm joining because uh, CC kind of got me interested in the foundation, and yeah, it seems like a fun thing to do. How do and, you know each other? Uh, we just like met on Instagram. Yeah. That is so cool. Gosh, <laughs> that's so awesome. Well, our Instagram is, you know, top notch. So you should follow us for sure. <laughs> um, that's so great. What talent or skill would you like to develop? Um, probably guitar because my dad plays and I've always been kind of interested. All right. Yeah. A lot of interest there. I feel like we should find somebody <laughs> who knows guitar and we could do a class together or something <laughs> with everyone who wants to learn that. All right, awesome, thanks Gil. Okay, I'm gonna move on. Okay, a few ongoing virtual opportunities for those of you who um, might be, you know, still wanting to get involved at home. Um, there's a ton of stuff you can do at home and send to us and still be involved um, that we've been doing over the past year that has really kept our community tight and just feeling like a family, um, like we always do. So one of them is our HPF at home video series um, where you can share your favorite activities or hobbies or special talents or whatever you are good at um, with our HPF families. And this has just been a way to show each other how we're all being healthy and productive um, during this time, um, keeping everything on a positive level and just happy um, to interact with each other. So we started, you know, when this series, and we have a whole playlist of, you know, over 200 videos just for this series um, from volunteers who share everything. Um, we started it because our kids need structure at home. 
um, when shelter in place hit, you know, all of their therapy sessions and schooling, all of the routines that they had just went away. So we started it with like tips and ideas for our kids, um, how to create structure for our parents um, to, to parents to do for their kids at home. Now it's just evolved and into this amazing thing of volunteers just sharing themselves with us. Um, so they play an instrument or they teach a dance routine or I had, we had one girl tell jokes and do a little comedy routine. It could be whatever you're interested in. I love seeing those and so do our kids and families. Um, and we share them, we do share them on all of our social media channels. Um, so it's an easy way to get involved and, um, and have an impact on, on our community on, online. Another one that I mentioned before is our Reading with Autism Tree video series. Um, these are so fun. You just pick it out of any children's book that's approved by a book publisher, um, as long as it's approved. We have a whole list um, that you can look at of book publishers who allow their books to be read online and recorded. And then we post them on our YouTube channel and our social media as well. Um, our kids love sitting down to watch these. Um, so you can guarantee that it'll be watched if you submit a book. And we also have a little free library um, at our founder's house. Um, if you're interested and you wanna learn more about getting, we have a ton of children's books that were donated by the amazing um, Team Volunteers in Action, SD6, SD6. Um, their troop was incredible and donated 300 books and the a, a majority of them were children's books. Um, so we do have children's books available if you, you don't have to go out and buy one. You can pick one up at the Little Free Library. Just let me know. All right, and then we also have our HPF Adaptive Art Program, which is led by volunteers and interns like you. Um, so this is a great way to um, get some leadership experience and also um, just interact one-on-one -on -one with, our, with our kids. Um, so these workshops we usually have about 10 kids that come to these adaptive arts and you can pick whatever type of art form you'd like to make any art. It could be a craft um, and it could be, or it could be painting or whatever you'd like. Um, we like to keep it simple. Um, we do um, like have it be not too high of a cost um, for our kids and families. So I, as many people can participate as, as possible. Um, but these are led by our volunteers and our interns. And we do these about once a month. Um, I know that Cece and her friend Nat are going to be running our adapt an adaptive art workshop in August, in early August. So if you're interested in running one of these, please let me know and we can put one on the calendar. And then last, I just wanted to um, say that I would love any landscape photos. Um, we do these weekly lunch and learns, which I'll talk about a little bit later, um, but we do a question of the day and we usually need landscape photos um, from our community so we can create a cool visual like this. Um, so I shout out to Natalie um, and Natalia and Nat, who gave me like six different amazing photos um, from like different places that she visited and I'm definitely going to be using those. So if you have any landscape photos on your phones, please send them to me. Um, I sent you all a reminder text, so you have my new phone number. You can also find it online um, and just, you can text them right over. I'd appreciate all those. Okay, a few program highlights and from the past month and upcoming events. So we do a Girls in STEM workshop. I know that Ayana mentioned it. Um, that's originally how she found out about us. Um, so we have um, the Girls Who Code Club, the Autism Tree Club at Canyon Crest Academy is so amazing and we just love them. Um, it's this whole group of girls who like to do girls in STEM workshops. So these are all STEM related activities. Um, I know that they've done, like you can see in the picture, different like art um, and math type of drawings, um, which is really fun to do. So we're still doing these on a virtual basis. We do these about once a month. Um, our next one will be in August. Um, we're still setting the date, but if you'd like to be involved, please let me know. Um, we also have our Kids Fitness Workshop, which is run by a USD volunteer from the University of San Diego, um, Annika Tulu. 
Uh, she's a certified fitness trainer and nutrition specialist, which is amazing. Um, so she wanted to do these fitness workshops for our kids and get them moving. Like movement is so important. And, you know, we're always on our screens and especially during the pandemic. So it's time to get back out and moving. And so she's doing this fitness workshops um, for our kids to do at home, to just do a little simple exercises. Um, so if you want to get moving with our kids, this is a fun one to volunteer for. We do the, these monthly as well. Our next one will be in July, um, date T TBD. But if you're interested, let me know and I'll let you know when that date will be. And our teen time program, um, this is really fun for, this is a huge hit for our teens. They love, we have a, a teen database of over 200 teens um, and we have a solid amount of people, of, of teens who come to our teen events every week or every month. Um, we partner with the Sensory Friendly San Diego. Um, they're so amazing. They do these virtual meetups um, and do fun arts and crafts and they have discussion activities. Um, this is a really fun one for volunteers um, because our teens, they want that engagement. They want um, to, to build friendships and um, get to know one another and practice that those social communication, social cues and all of that. Um, so this is a fun one. We, our next one will be this Friday at 3 p.m. Um, so tomorrow. And then we're also having, I know that they're also having a summer bash um, online next week on, um, on July 1st, I think it is. Um, so let me know if you want to participate. That will be a fun one online too. And yeah, all right. Next we have our HPF coding program, um, which is so amazing. It was started by our intern, Ann Lynn, um, and her sister, Hannah. Ann Lynn is a Princeton University um, student, and she used to go to Canyon Crest. And then Hannah was also um, just recently graduated and she's going to MIT. Very, very smart, wonderful young ladies who started this coding program during COVID last year. And it's been a huge hit for our teens and ages, well, ages 12 plus. Um, it teaches coding using um, the curriculum of coding.org. If you like to learn about coding or uh, like that, engineering type of problem solving, creative thinking um, and coding and can help our kids code. Um, this is the one for you to volunteer for. So it's really fun. And Lynn and Hannah do an awesome job. And um, there's usually a pretty good turnout for these as well. Um, our HPF virtual musical play group is so much fun. It's for our smaller kids. Usually our parents who reach out to me whose kid just got diagnosed, I always tell them about our musical play group. So this is for younger kiddos ages three to seven or two, two to seven, um, sometimes even younger, sometimes a little older if the kids really love music. Um, they, we partner with the Music Therapy Center of California. Their music therapists run these play groups for us. We have been doing them virtually since March of last year. Um, our kids love them. Um, they have really easy, makeshift um, instruments that you can make at home. Um, you can buy a little egg shakers or you can make your own. They've used Tupperware for drums. Um, so it's easy to participate. And it's like the cutest thing ever watching these kiddos. Um, so if you wanna volunteer for the play groups, um, let me know. Our virtual adaptive dance summer sessions happen every week. Um, we have, we serve, um, two different age groups, ages five to 10 and 11 through 16. They alternate weeks. Our summer session is going on right now. Um, this is one of the only programs that we have going on right now that are in-person. So if you're looking for in-person opportunities only, this is one to sign up for. Um, we have them every week um, and on Zoom. The teacher does both. I know a few of you on here have already participated and they just love it. They say it's so much fun. Um, this is in partnership with Tap Fever Studios, um, Larissa Hall. I gotta give a shout out to Larissa. She is incredible. Um, just so generous in providing these weekly workshops for or dance sessions for free. They do fun little dance, really, really simple dance routines and then movement games. Um, so it's a really fun one to be a part of. And our next one will be, of course, this week, 
Saturday, June 26th, and they're always at noon as well. Our lunch and learns are one of my favorite things, or is the favorite thing that came out of COVID, I have to say is our lunch and learn series. I host this with Dana K. Hoff, our co-founder and volunteer executive director every Wednesday. Um, usually they're at 12 p.m., but sometimes we change them depending on the guest speaker schedule. Um, but typically they are at noon um, and they're only 45 minutes, um, maybe an hour at the most, but usually 45 minutes. And we have feature a different guest speaker every single week. Um, it's so much fun. And every speaker has, we've done 57 to date. This is our 57th. Um, every speaker is so different and brings a whole new perspective to the table every week. Um, and we don't micromanage what they want to share. It's very organic, like Brina um, said that Dana and I like to say all the time. Um, and it's just been so wonderful to get to know people who have not only built, you know, been here with Autism Tree since the beginning. I know Brina and John have both done one. So you guys should all watch it if you haven't. Um, they're all on our YouTube channel. They're under their own playlist. Um, this week we had um, Nam Chanterin, who is a yoga instructor, and his wife has autism. And he, um, she wasn't diagnosed until after they were married. And now it's changing. It changed his perspective on everything and how, even how he runs his yoga practice. Um, I will be posting that um, really soon uh, on our YouTube channel, so you can take a take a watch. He went through some meditation practices, which were very calming and just amazing and Nam's a, a really cool guy um so and then we have a, one of our h Fit board members next week next wednesday eric tusick he's uh, uh one of our dads as well he has two sons on the spectrum and he's going to be sharing what autism tree means to him um so we're just we have amazing guest speakers if you definitely sign up if you if you um can or if you're available um, if not, we record all of them and post them on our YouTube channel and you can watch them on your own time too. Next, we have our HBF Adaptive Art Program, which I had already kind of gone over. Um, these are classes that are taught by you. You could do any art class type of art activity that you'd like. Um, so let me know if you're interested. Our next one will be run by one of our interns, Lauren Spott. She's actually on the East Coast and um, goes to University of Penn, Pennsylvania. Um, and she's doing a fun um, art, arts and crafts activity for our kids in July, on July 10th. So if you wanna volunteer and see how Lauren runs it, uh, maybe as you know, you can participate before you decide whether or not you wanna lead one, um, this would be, that would be the date. Next, we have our Lego therapy workshop. Um, which Santana, I'll go ahead and pass it over to you for this since you are our program director. Just say a little bit about the program. So the Lego group is really awesome. Um, I try, I, in person, we work in small groups. Um, it's the parent and the sibling, um, and we try to get them to communicate and just work together to build a Lego set. Um, virtually, I just have these little Lego parties and we just build whatever we want and we show each other and we ask each other questions and it's just so much fun. And this past Lego group, I had some really amazing volunteers. Cece was one of them. Um, and they were so like, it was just so much fun. So you should definitely check it out. Yes. Our volunteers who um, go, go above and beyond and really um, want to initiate conversations with our kids are the most fun work virtual workshops that you can participate. So if you plan on volunteering virtually with us, um, one of, I would say one of the requirements should be, you know, at least connect with one kid that's on there um, and get to know them a little bit and ask them questions. And if they're running off, you know, just call them and see if, you know, where they're going and what's going on. Um, just getting to know them and um, initiating that connection with them. What you get in it, what you what you put in it, you'll get out of it. Um, so definitely Lego therapy, everybody loves Legos, it's so much fun. Okay, next, our in-person opportunities. Um, coming up in July is our Bridge to the Beach week-long camp um, from Monday, July 19th through Friday, July 23rd. 
we gather for two hours. We're going to do two different shifts, um, serving 15 kids each. So total in total, we'll serve 30 kids, um, but there will be 15 HPF kids. We also partner with the San Diego Junior Lifeguards um, to pair every kid with the San Diego Junior Lifeguard to do these fun activities such as boogie boarding, kayaking, paddle boarding, and then surfing. So we do three days at the bay and two days at Mission Beach. This is held at Mission Bay area um, yeah, at the Santa Clara Rec Center. And then we walk over to the beach um, as well to do the surfing and sand building activities. Um, so it's lots of fun. What I need volunteers for, and ideally this volunteer would volunteer for the whole week. Um, and we need, I would say three volunteers per shift. Um, so I don't need a ton of volunteers for this. And um, this would mainly be to help set up, um, bring supplies, set up all of the um, snacks and the registration table, um, and then also breaking down at the end, um, helping me pack everything, as well as taking attendance, um, checking in people through registration, um, and pairing the kids up each week. And then, of course, running around and trying to capture all of the fun and joy that's happening during those few hours every day of that week um, and getting these cute pictures of our kids um, with their San Diego Junior Lifeguard buddies who are doing the water activities. Um, you as a volunteer are welcome to, you know, wade in the water, um, but you won't be volunteered paired with one of our kids. That's what the San Diego Junior Lifeguards are for. Um, but I do need interns and volunteers to help with the registration part setting up and just operations, making everything go smoothly Those that for that full week. Um, even if you can't come the full week and you can maybe make three out of the five days, I'm totally flexible with that. That'd be awesome. Um, if you can come and take pictures and just experience the joy and be outside with us, um, again, that'd be really fun. If you wanna get hands-on, a little bit more hands-on experience with our kids and meet our kids um, and families, okay. this is a really good volunteer. Okay. Yes. Can, uh, is that something that I could have NCL kids girls sign up for? Yeah, absolutely. To help me set up, um, we do, you know, since it's 15 kids that we're allowing per shift, and they will all be picked with junior guards. Um, so that well, no, I, I mean, I'm familiar with the program, but I'm just wondering because it's, sometimes it's hard to get somebody to volunteer all week for it. So yeah. I, I would think if you want to break it up into shifts and then we can do a sign up sheet. Yeah, sure. Um, I would only need like three or four at the most um, per shift. So that'd be eight girls, different girls if they want to do it. But yeah, yeah can... it could be eight a day or, you know, say that maybe you want them to sign up for at least two days or three out of the five. Yes. That's it. You're going to have trouble finding teens that are free all week. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it is what it is. We'll take people through shifts um, and I'll be really flexible with people's schedules. It's only two hours of the day, 8.30, 10.30, 10.45 to 12.45. Right. Um, so people can pick and choose which time works best for them. Um, but yeah, Brina, let's do it. Because that, that's an easy one. But again, they'd like to sign up for like two hours at a time, like one or two days, not mm -hmm. all week. Yeah, so the, the two, it, it is two hours. It used to be three hours shifts, but then we realized that usually the kids get tired after two hours anyway. So two hours is like the sweet spot. Um, oh, and I love what my program looks like. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> Can you send me a copy? <laughs> <laughs> so I took this actually from our, our day with Joel and Andres. Um, so because we mentioned creating mandalas. So like Brina mentioned, we partner with the National Charity League. Um, and for we are doing a girls beach day. This is Brina's idea, and I love it. And this is will be our one of our first in person events after the Bridge to the Beach camp. I'm so excited, stoked for this. Um, we are going to be serving five HBF girls ages six through twelve, and five HBF girls thirteen through eighteen, and pairing them with National Charity League girls as well. So we're going to do a beach day. Mandala is what you see in that picture. Um, so it's basically like a sand um, design that you're creating with um, rakes and different tools or um, like sand tools um, to create to create pictures in the sand. 
Um, so that's going to be for our older kids, you know, creating mandalas. And then for the younger kids, you know, we're, we're, we'll be splashing in the ocean and just having a lot of fun. So if you would like to help with setting up and tearing down and checking in people um, and making sure everything's going smoothly, please let me know. Um, this would be a fun um, opportunity to volunteer for as well. August 8th. And that brings us to up to date for the next month and a half until our next core team meeting um, in July, at the end of July. Um, if you, we constantly update our events calendar. So we probably will be putting more in-person opportunities, developing those in August and September. Um, so definitely tune back to our um, core team meetings on a monthly basis. Um, we, this to close everything out, we like to, give um, a perspective on the financial perspective on what it takes to, to keep HBF running and keep our doors open. Um, this includes 1.5 staff. We have myself, I'm the only full-time employee. Everything else is run by amazing volunteers like our program managers like Brina and John um, who are just so dedicated and um, our volunteers can help us run everything. Plus our part-time employee Santana my program assistant who helps me run everything as well. Um, rent, insurance. Um, so rent, we do move the autism free um, office into a storage unit. Um, we like to call it the HBF vault, uh, which I think is a super cool name um, because it has 16 years or 18 years worth of, you know, um, materials and history and everything of autism tree um, that was in our office is now in the vault. Um, it's actually a really nice, really nice setup. We have a little office area and then there's the storage part. Um, but John and I did our best to make it feel very autism tree, very home. And I'd love for you know our volunteer to feel very safe for them to come and come visit um, our HPF vault as well. And maybe even work out of there. We do have uh, a few computers and um, all of our supplies there. Um, okay, and then rent insurance. And of course, our 23 programs and services. This also used to include preschool screenings. So those are on hold right now um, because of COVID. So on average, it costs 15,000 to 20,000 per month to run Autism Tree. And this is during the pandemic. Um, so this is just a good perspective on how much it takes to run everything that we do. Um, we have raised $87,498 since the beginning of this year. That's actually on the lower end um, of where we are, where we usually are during the year. Um, so we would love your help. If you have any fundraising ideas or ways to give back, or um, I'd love to hear any of those um, that you have. Um, we wanna reach as many people um, and get people fired up to help our kids and families. Um, so if you have any ideas, Please let me know. We have our, we've reached 24% of our operating budget for the whole year. Um, a majority of that money comes in the Q4, which is like the last three months of the year. So um, I'd prefer not to stress um, and reach our budget, you know, at, all at the end of the year. We usually have Giving Tuesday and all these, um, our year end campaign that where we fundraise and do a giant telethon. Um, I would really, which I would love my volunteers helps with. That's like totally necessary. Um, but if you know of anybody who wants to give back to Autism Tree, um, please let me know. Um, and I think that's pretty much it for me. So does anybody have any questions about any of the programs that I went over, um, ways to get involved? You can type in the chat or, hey, Katri, y'all, go ahead. Hi, I don't know if you've thought about this or not, but I was thinking about Girl Scout cookies and like selling those, like maybe um, ATPF kids could like partner with like Girl Scout people, who, I mean, Girl Scouts, yeah, that's what they're called, um, and help them sell cookies. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but that is an idea I had. Thank you for bringing that up. I actually was a Girl Scout and I went all the way. I did my gold award and I worked for them a little bit. That's actually my mentor um, works for, used to work for Girl Scouts. And so um, I love that connection and we can sidebar on that idea. 
and see what we can take there. Anybody else have any comments or questions? Okay, I'd like to take a picture of all of us together. All right, now's the time to turn on your camera, John. <laughs> if you can, if not, he has a very nice sunset picture. That's cool too. Okay, everybody smile. I'll take a screenshot. Ready? One, two, three, two. Awesome. Well, thank you all for joining me on a Thursday afternoon, late afternoon. And I'm sure I'll be talking with each and every one of you um, in ways that you can keep, keep staying involved. Um, feel free to always give me a call or an email. I love hearing from all of you. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great night. Bye, Thank Ria. you so much. <laughs> Bye, Ria. Thank you. Talk later. Talk next week. <laughs>